Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me solving JEE questions. And today I have a JEE 2020 question. It's question nine from paper two. Now let's get in the question. F of X plus Y is equal to F of X plus F of Y plus F of X multiplied by F of Y. And we know that F of X equals to X times G of X. And if the limit as x goes to 0 of g of x is equal to 1, then we have to see which are right, a, b, c, or d. Well, I'm just going to rewrite that, in that property right down here. So it says that f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y plus f of x multiplied by f of y. Now, hmm, well, what does the right-hand side look like? Well, if we recall, we know that a plus 1 multiplied by b plus 1 is equal to a plus b plus ab plus 1. Now look, a, b, ab, but there's no 1. But that's easy, just add the 1 on both sides. So, if we add a 1 on both sides, then we know that f of x plus y plus 1 is equal to a plus 1 plus a plus 1 times b plus 1, which is equal to fx plus 1 multiplied by fy of 1. Now, let's look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Well, they have the same form, right? A function added with 1, a function added with 1, a function added with 1. So this calls for some sort of substitution. So why don't we let u of x equal to f of x plus 1. Then we know that u of y will be f of y plus 1, and that will also work for x plus 1. So... We can put the new function down here. We know that it will become u of x plus y. And this will equal to u of x multiplied by u of y. And this is an exponential Cauchy functional equation. Where the general solution to this type of equation is e to the power of kx. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that, oh, and in most functional equations, we usually get the answer by guessing. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm guessing the exponential function e to the power of kx as a guess, and it works. So we know that u of x will equal to e to the power of kx, and from here, we know that f of x will be, f of x is u of x minus 1, so it's just e to the power of kx minus 1. Um, and we know that f of x is equal to x times g of x, right? So we know that g of x will equal to this divided by x. So e to the power of kx minus 1 divided by x. But this only works when x is not equal to 0. So how do we figure out k? Well, did you read every single word of the given information? It says that if the limit of x goes to 0, of g of x is equal to 1. So why don't we just try and plug that in? So I'm just going to write it over here. The limit as x goes to 0 of g of x, which is this. is equal to 1. But that's not our goal. We have to figure out what k is. Now, let's plug in 0 into all of the x's. What we get? we get a 0 over 0 case. So in this case, we can use L'Hopital's rule. So it's equal to 
the limit as x goes to 0, the denominator becomes 1, the, the derivative of negative 1 is 0, and the derivative of this is just k times e to the power of kx. And here, we can just plug in x is equal to 0, so the limit will become k, and we know that this limit is also equal to 1, and this is equal to 1. So, we know that k is equal to 1. Now, I'm just going to rub everything out. f of x is equal to e to the power of 1 times x, which is just x minus 1. And g of x is equal to e to the power of x minus 1 over x. Now, let's look at the choices. A. Now, here. Now, guys, I'm going to let B be last, since B is the hardest. So right now, I'm going to do A, C, and D, and leave B for the last. So A, F is differentiable. Yes, because since F is an exponential function, F is differentiable. So A is correct. C, F prime of 1 is equal to 1. Why don't we just take the derivative of Fx? So we know that f prime of x is equal to e to the power of x. If we sub in 1, it's not 1, it's e. So c is wrong. d. f prime of 0 is equal to 1. Plug in 0 here, e to the power of 0 is 1. So d is correct. Now, time for the hardest one, b. b says, if g of 0 is equal to 1, then g is differentiable. The first step to prove that something is differentiable is you got to prove that it's continuous. Well, didn't it already tell us in the given information? No, because that's the limit. But to look in b, it says if g of 0 is exactly equal to 1. So that means this curve is smooth and it's continuous. And our next step is we have to prove that when x is not equal to 0, that the derivative exists. And when x is equal to 0, the derivative exists. Well, we obviously know that when x is not equal to 0, the derivative exists. So I'm going to skip that step. But if you guys want to do it, be my guest. So the thing I'm going to focus on is when x is equal to 0. So here we need to utilize the first principle, which I know all of you guys hate. So, we know the first principle is the limit as h goes to 0 of g of, not x plus h, it's 0 plus h, and then minus g of 0 over h, right? And this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0, e to the power of h minus 1 over h, minus g of 0, which is 1 and then over h. Now, from here, we see that there's a fraction on a fraction. So why don't we just multiply h on the top and bottom? So equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the power of h minus 1 minus h over h squared. Why don't we try to plug in 0? It's 0 over 0. So we can use L'Hopital's rule, equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of the derivative of the top is just e to the power of h minus 1 over 2h. Now, let's plug in 0 again, 0 over 0. So that means we can use L'Hopital's rule again. So this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of the top is just e to the power of h, and the bottom is 2. And this is equal to, you plug in 0, it's 1 over 2, so it's equal to 1 over 2. Now, you guys, does 1 over 2 exist? Yes. So, we have proved that g is differentiable if g of 0 equals to 1. 
So that means B is differentiable. <laughs> so that means B is correct. So the answer to this question is A, B, and D. Done. So this is the final answer of the JEE twenty twenty question nine of paper two. And thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoy my video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.